So let's have a small lesson on this work. Um, this is part of my sheet music collection, Gaspar Sands, Volume 1. And follow the lesson for free, but there is a link to that sheet music edition in the description. So this is one of the shorter works in the, in the collection, and, and almost like a, a deceivingly difficult one in some ways. On the one hand, very, you know, straightforward, it's first position, nothing, no strange, strange like stretches or anything like that. But at the same time, there's, there's something about it that requires a, a kind of a crisp delivery and a little bit of tempo on, on the second half of it that makes it a little bit more challenging. I think the first thing you want to, to think about, though, is to tr track the musical, musically active line. So, you know, you might have it in the bass here, then in the upper voice, then in the lower voice. And, and that's, it's very playful in that way, you know, it's switching, it's, the activity is switching from voice to voice. So in one way you can practice tracking just like the musically active line, or you can practice the voices individually, like the upper voice on its own and the lower voice on its own, um, to make sure there's voice independence in that way. But I think in, in many ways you are tracking the, the musically active line in this work. Besides that, um, try to focus on getting a really strong half note pulse um, for the cut time here. I think that's that's half of the battle is just to make sure that you have like a really crisp kind of dance to it. You know, just a really crisp dance feel. And then when you start adding in the counterpoint and the, the musically moving lines, it, you know, no matter what happens, you have that nice dance feel to follow and to fall back on. But let's, go, let's do it a little bit slower here. I, I do like to play the lower voice with my thumb, upper voice with my fingers, um, just to keep them very separate. And that ornament, at, you know, is for the C sharp, but it, it's really easy to accidentally mute out the the E string by with your fourth finger, you know. So just be a little bit cautious of that. Make sure the angle of your guitar is, is you know more upright and your fingers really curved so that there's clearance for your fourth finger to to not interrupt the upper E because it is part of that upper line, and you want to make sure that it is heard and not just muted out by the ornament on that inner voice, which isn't. In particular, in this particular case, hugely important. Bar five. I like to add a little mordant there, D, C sharp, D. The rhythm in bar five and six is a little debatable. There's, it's a little bit, it's a little bit messed up in the original tablature. It's, it's actually like almost an error in the, in, in the rhythmic notation in the original tablature. Uh, but I definitely interpret it as, as this. Just, he's just changing up the rhythm a little bit uh, in the bass voice there. And the upper voice. I like how it contrasts the first line of the music, so um, I definitely do it like that. Measure 9. Uh, so here I do kind of like mute out that chord. So off. So I just release it and, and it's just a crisp kind of delivery. Uh, 
You could try to hold it or like the bass voice. Um, I think, you know, you could do a, a bar or something like that, but I think it in this kind of crisp, bouncy um, aesthetic, I think it's fine to release it. I opted, I used to play this, you know, differently. I think I did that. Um, now I'm just kind of stretching out on the first string. Um, I just felt it, it feels a little bit more natural and sounds more similar to the very, to measure nine. So I, I've changed the fingering there to make it a little bit more consistent sounding. When I get to measure 11 though, I do sustain the upper voice. Just for some contrast. So you have some crisp detached playing there and then some sustained. So measure nine again. Those eighth notes are a little bit tricky in the bass. I've decided to use P-I-P-I. -I. You could use your fingers, but I just find it's a little bit strange. So using P-I just made a lot of sense. Getting the sound to be nice and even is a little bit of a challenge for some people with P-I, um, but I think it's, it's worth it there, especially if your tempo is high. If your tempo is low, I think you can just switch am I to those notes and it'd be fine or use your thumb even but at faster tempos I found PI to be the best solution for me anyway measure 13 here I do use my my fingers for that musical line on the repeat I do a mordant and I actually add an extra D there just to fill the space so it doesn't feel so final yet because we're gonna end the piece on the repeat. You don't have to repeat any of these sections by the way, but the piece is so small that I repeat at the double bar line and the final bar line um, just to e elongate the piece a little bit. And if you wished, you could add a whole bunch of extra ornamentation, but I'm, I'm not doing too much of that. So that, that final measure, I'm just doing a mordant and then a D and then starting again. Um, on the final time, add more of a writ than I just did there. add like more of a chord if you wish whatever feels um, most comfortable I just kept it nice and simple so yeah uh, it's like again in some ways very easy little little piece once you bring that tempo up and you have the aesthetic that you want it can be a little bit tricky to control so just make sure you're practicing it properly and then the next and final one we'll be doing from the collection is is Canarios which is a little bit more of an involved piece